I came up on shore about maybe five years ago. And since I've been on shore, it's been a really enriching experience. It's been eye-opening. And since I've been traveling around, meeting new friends, having new experiences, I've been uh, keeping a diary. And tonight, I wanted to share with you some of my diary entries. Ariel is on my mind tonight. I wonder where she's at, what she's doing, who she's with. I wonder if she's having the time of her life now that we aren't together. She must miss me some. At least I hope she does. I wonder if she's with someone else. I can't get that thought out of my mind. Being alone really sucks. I feel so alone. I don't feel like I fit in with the sea world anymore and I stand out like a sore thumb on shore. It's a no-win situation. I mean, I guess I still have a connection with the sea. Some of my best friends still live there. Sebastian has been there for me. Last night I talked to him on the phone. I was so upset. My mind has just been feeling unbalanced. He was there for me. He keeps asking me when I'm going to visit. But how can I visit? I feel so out of the loop. That and the real reason I don't want to visit is because I'm going to run into you know who. I'm afraid of that moment when I would see her again and at the same time fantasize about it. I wonder what her reaction would be seeing me there in the sea. Would she pass by without an acknowledgement? Or would she give me a warm embrace? I hope she would do the latter. And then we would spend the whole night together talking and laughing and I would tell her everything that has happened on the shore and about all the people I've met and the things I've seen. I would explain to her how I've been feeling and how I've missed her. She would tell me how she's been with no one else since we broke up and that she missed me too. And then at the end of the night, we would kiss and make love as best we could. I mean, we're different species and all. And then I would remain in the sea and everything would go back to the way it was before she cheated on me. It would be magical, the best time of my life. That's about my ex-wife. But things are looking up. I met someone. Let me repeat that. I met someone. <laughs> He's handsome and he treats me right and even pays for dinner every once in a while. And yes, I said he. I've switched teams and species all at once. <laughs> okay, I'll start from the beginning. I've been ha trying to frequent the neighborhood bars. I've been going by myself, so I, by myself since I don't have that many friends. I mean, who wants to be seen with a sea turtle? But I had hopes it might be a good way of meeting people. So I was at this one bar, and it was a weeknight, so there weren't many people. I'm sitting at the bar, and this guy sits on the bar stool next to me and orders his drink. He turns to me and says, nice shell. I say, thanks. He says, where are you from? I say, the ocean, how about you? He says, New York. I say, I always wanted to visit there. 
And the conversation continued from there. It continued for the next two hours. That night, he paid for my drinks and we exchanged numbers and we've been seeing each other ever since. It's been magical. I love having a companion. He's turning into my best friend. But another highlight of the relationship is the sex. <laughs> I lost my virginity to him. And I know what you're thinking. Number one, how does a sea turtle and a human have sex? And what about Ariel? Well, let me tell you, I have some tricks up my sleeve and we had no problems becoming intimate. It was like we were born for each other. As for Ariel, we never had sex. We found out early on that sea turtles and mermaids can't do it together. I thought our love could sustain the relationship, but that wasn't enough. Now I understand why she cheated on me. Looking back, I sometimes think, how can I blame her? Okay, I have one more. <coughs> I didn't think it was possible. I didn't think anyone did. But it happened. My boyfriend got me pregnant. <coughs> we, never, we never bothered using protection. I mean, who could seriously consider that a sea turtle and human could have a baby? How is the baby going to look like? Fucked up, I tell you that much. I'm going to have a fucked up looking baby. OK, I shouldn't say that. Maybe he or she will look semi-normal. But how are we going to raise this child? In the sea or on land? There are a lot of things con to consider here. I don't feel like this child will fit in on sea or land. It's just plain sad. I feel so sorry for this child. Me and Tom got into an argument when we found out. He's pro-life and I'm pro-choice. And if I had a choice, I'd get rid of this fucked up baby. OK, again, I shouldn't say that. But how can I not? Plus, I don't see how we're going to afford to raise this child. God knows I've had no luck finding a real job. I mean, who wants to hire a sea turtle? And Tom, even though I love him, hasn't held a steady job in years. He says we will make it work, but how? Now I really think I need to see a therapist. <laughs> You know, since I've been on shore, I have been making some friends. And I've been getting over Ariel slowly. And I heard this song on the radio by Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> and it really struck a chord with me. So I would like to sing it for you tonight. Yeah. Thank you. 
put me on. I even fell for that stupid love song. Yeah, yeah. Since you've been gone. How come I never hear you say, I just want to be with you? Guess you never felt that way. But since you've been Could you play the music? 